The audience for television is diversifying. Not only is there free-to-air television, which you're watching this on right now, there's also subscription television, streaming television, and that presents an interesting challenge for the free-to-air channels. Uh, next month marks the one-year anniversary of Freeview Plus, which is the platform where all of the catch-up services, so your ABC iView, your SBS On Demand, your 10 Play, can all be accessed on your television. Not all TVs have it yet, it's slowly rolling out, but just how effective is it? How can it be better to discuss that? This week we have Janet Carr, the co-creator and executive producer of Good Game on ABC TV, and Peter Marks, who is an app developer and also a guy that actually works in catch-up services. You work on the ABC's iView system. How do you rate Freeview Plus? I think it's a great idea. I mean, the idea is really the broadcasters are scared because they're saying people are not turning on the big TV in the side of the room. They're sitting looking at tablets and phones and or, getting or doing video both at the same demand. time. Or TV, broadcast TV is just in the background. It's mm. just something that's just running in the background while they look at other things. So they're really trying to draw people back into the TV set again. So HBB TV, which is the terrible full name for it, <laughs> is a hybrid of broadcast and broadband and it tries to bring the two together. Now, modern TVs, if you buy a TV in the last few years, have it built in. There's also set-top boxes. My experience, and I know the people who've built this stuff and they've really done the best job that they can and it's got some great features in there where content... Of, you know, that is relevant to what you're seeing on broadcast is overlaid on top of the screen and you can go into it. But the TV sets today, even the most modern sets, have vastly underpowered CPUs in them. So it's all very slow to use. And really the remote controls are not very good. If you ever have to enter in the search text and things like that, it's just crazy to, to do. It's much easier to use, say, a tablet or a phone for doing that sort of interaction. So I think they're really fighting with the TV's a different thing. It's a lean back kind of thing. But look, there's been some great examples. Uh, I think Channel 7 is probably doing the best. They did uh, something last year with the Australian Open where their Freeview Plus service had uh, a wall of uh, streaming videos with all of the different courts. And so you could go to different matches. There would be two on air, but there were, I don't know what it was, eight or nine of them available. Some of them with without annoying commentary, which is really good. <laughs> Probably the best feature of it for me is the unified EPG, Electronic Program Guide, across all of the channels where you can do things like search by genre for something that you want to watch. And, of course, they all try to blend what's on now with catch-up. Don't you think that younger audiences in particular, they don't want to trawl through an EPG? No. You know, they don't necessarily even know what they want to watch. They just want to sort of go and then that's it, boom. You know, and you look at something like the simplicity of Netflix, mm. you, you love a series and it says, you know, here's other things like that. Yep, the recommendations. I think that whole content discovery by recommendations or social, you know, where someone on Facebook who's yeah. a friend who says, check this out, it's really great. I mean, that's the way people discover programs. But I don't know, I still like going by genre. I want to go and, you know, we often sit down and say, hey, let's watch a science fiction something. And, you know, that's a way that people access content. You know, gaming content is the most watched content on services like YouTube. And we create gaming content. We need to be there. Now, you know, I believe that for a lot of our audience, they have turned their back on the ABC. Now, you know, with the exception possibly of Triple J, younger audiences may never come to the ABC for anything. And so I see particularly Pocket as an outreach program. You know, for me, it's about keeping a relationship with those younger viewers, the gamers, mm. who may never come to ABC for anything else, and yet there it is. You know, even they might not even know it's an ABC program. Good Game Pocket is, is your series of, like, daily short form. It's a daily short form, usually under 10 minutes, deliberately targeting people online, um, released at about 3.30 every day to catch people on their way home. You know, that kind of bite-sized, mm. accessible video. We are not constrained with Pocket the way we are with the big show, which is, you know, quite carefully scripted and beautifully edited and delivered at 27 and a half minutes every week and boom, there it is. And it, that's wonderful when people still love it and we will continue to make it. But Pocket has a much more sort of free, loose feel about it. So we can do things like Let's Plays where, you know, his eight minutes of just randomly talking about his first eight minutes of playing a game, you know, <laughs> which we would not have time for in the traditional broadcast. And it also doesn't sit with where people psychologically are at when 
they're sitting down at, you know, on a Tuesday to watch it. You know, like it, it doesn't fit that behaviour. No, it's interesting. I mean, that is something that I'm trying to build, the ability to just stumble across but I, it. I wonder if that's the future of broadcast TV is kind of the showcase. It's mm. it's kind of, a, it's it's just on and you turn it on, you flick around the channels and you see samplers. So, uh, and this is where kind of the binge idea has come up, that they'll mm. show the first episode on live to air, free to air TV and then say, okay, at the end of this episode, if you like that, by the way, all the other episodes are now available for streaming. So it's kind of a, a showcase, it's here's the best of, rather than having a ton of channels. I would rather that RF spectrum was used for LTE, for mobile data, and we brought the price of that down. But everyone broadcasting stuff that's available for video on demand over the air just is a waste of radio spectrum. It should only be used for live breaking news, I guess live sport, and maybe there's a role for event TV where we're going to launch this big thing simultaneously across the country so everyone can talk about it. All right, what would you change about free-to-air television and the way it's delivered to your television? Let us know on Twitter or down below in the comment section. Thanks, guys. 